Testing, okay. <laughs> Hi friends, my name is Andre Freitas and together with Augusto Rosa, my PhD student on threatened butterflies, we will talk today about the Brazilian threatened swallowtails. And uh, this is us in a very good field trip before the pandemics. Uh, um, maybe it's important to, to talk about the action plan for Lepidoptera in Brazil. In this action plan, organized by myself and my friend Onildo João Marini Filho, um, in this plan we have a total of 71 acts, conservation acts, in 12 of which are actions specific for solotail, and eight is, are more general but also include solotails. I will not talk about these acts, but uh, I can make available the action plan for uh, the ones of you that would like to, to see this. Uh, the threatened Brazilian solotails were evaluated based on a very general um, workshop where we could evaluate 86% of the total solotail butterflies from Brazil. We have 67 species recorded in Brazil until now, and we could um, evaluate 86% of all solotails. And these are 50, 58 species of solotail that were evaluated. And we've ended with a list of 10 threatened taxa uh, distributed in eight species. That means that 12% of the Brazilian solotails are considered to have some degree of um, threatened. In our total red list, we have 58 butterflies listed as threatened in any of the categories. And again, the 10 taxa that are threatened of solotails represents 13% of all um, butterflies that were evaluated as threatened in Brazil. And just to have an idea, five of the solotails are critically endangered, four are endangered, and one is vulnerable. And another one, that data deficient or least concern. Uh, let's just take a look on this diversity you know, of these 10 taxa. Let's start with the Araclides imeros. Two subspecies are listed, the two known subspecies are listed as threatened. So we, we have first the Araclides imeros baia. This species is, uh, occurs in a very wide, uh, presents a very broad distribution in Brazil. And uh, the, the points where we have um, specimens collected are very distant to each other, but at least in one locality in Paraíba, they are locally abundant. And in this region, in this place, a specific place, if you go back there again and again, we can see the adults flying in, uh, in the semi-arid transition to the Caatinga. And we published recently a, a paper about this population and it's available for the ones of you that have interest. The another subspecies of Himerus, that's Heraclides Himerus, Himerus, uh, it's much more known. Keith Brown, in the previous decades, um, studied the life history, immature stages, host plants, distribution, even population ecology, based on market capture. This species is apparently much more restricted than the subspecies Bayer. But it's again locally abundant in several different um, colonies known until now. But it's Clages or Clages. Um, we just have two localities for this species in Brazil. There's also some records from Venezuela. Uh, this species is very scarce, but the colonies that we know are very predictable. That means that if you go back to the specific point, where you saw a Paridis clages before, you have a big chance to, to find again specimens, individuals flying there. We could see that in a small forest reserve near Belém, um, where the, that is one, a very well known colony of Paridis clages. And when we go back there again and again, we have the chance to see at least one or two individuals each day. This is another species that's also listed as threatened, Paridistros danunci. This is the subspecies of Paridistros. Uh, the nominal species Paridistros tros is very common from Sao Paulo to Rio de Janeiro and Espírito Santo in all the coastal uh, forests, very wet slopes of the, the Serra do Mar, the mountain range that 
is running along the coastal Brazil. But this species, Paribus tros danunsi, recently described, is restricted to a very narrow stripe of mountain slopes in Santa Catarina and Paraná states. They are hard to observe, locally scarce, maybe because they are high flyers in the canopy or near the canopy. And uh, we have no more information besides his description and geographic distribution. Another mm, species well known uh, is Paris Pantonus castilioi. It's well known because we have data on immature stages and at least good data about a single colony near the Castillo a municipality in Brazil. Uh, this species, this subspecies was studied by Keith Brown years ago, but it's locally scarce and most of the original um, populations have been extincted because some dams that were uh, established along the Paraná River. And but the only the main place of study of this species is still intact. And recently we with some uh, collaborators, we could found an additional colony much more uh, downstream in the Paraná River, in the Paraná state. So we have possibly the, the, uh, this opens possibilities of conservation because it's quite like, likely that this species occurs along the Paraná River from the points here in Sao Paulo, the original ones where we found the species, to this new one uh, in the Paraná River. The Paraná River is, is what delimits all these borders between these states. So we have possibilities that this subspecies occurs along this uh, river. Uh, we have more data also about systematic position, and hopefully we can get more data based on these new populations. Paris burkelanus is a very emblematic species. It's critically endangered based on our last uh, evaluations. We have some colonies disjunct, let's say, because we have two main areas where the Paris Burkelanus occurs. One includes Sao Paulo and Minas Gerais, that's here. Then we have a, a, a large area where population have not been found, even if they were more or less searched. And again, we have data from the Brasilia, that's the near the capital of Brazil, in the federal district in Goiás. And, um, this species is very well known, again, because we have abundant data on population ecology, on immature stage host plants, and including a uh, one-year uh, mark recapture study on population biology of this species. And maybe this is a candidate for uh, management in the future. Paris Bugnicus camisonia is also critically endangered. It's the only one subspecies of Paris bunicus that have some degree of threat. Um, the other species are common from Argentina to Northeast Brazil, but Camisonia occurs in a very narrow region of uh, coastal small hills and the, adja the adjacent sand forest called Restingas in coastal Santa Catarina. Very few colonies are known, and they are the, the species is never abundant locally. So we have no much data about this species, and any additional information would be of help to, to we better understand the situation of this very interesting taxa. Now uh, we we'll move to the most known and more emblematic species of um, threatened solotail in Brazil and even worldwide. This is Paridis ascanius. Paridis ascanius is now considered as endangered, not critically endangered. Uh, Paridis ascanius has been studied since the beginning of the last century, first by Romualdo da Almeida, later by Dr. Keith Brown and collaborators, and recently by us and some colleagues from our laboratory. And uh, there's an uh, important group in, in Rio de Janeiro, led by Gilberto, that's studying other aspects of natural enemies, uh, parasitoids, and uh, distribution of these species. And Paris Ascanius is maybe the first, not, not maybe, it was the first um, invertebrate to be part of an official list of 
Brazilian organisms threatened of extinction is the first butterfly, of course, in these lists. And uh, because of that, it becomes a symbol of conservation of butterflies and invertebrates in Brazil. But it's as currently kind of restricted to the sand forests, again, we call locally Restinga, uh, on Costa Rio de Janeiro and the Southern Spirit Santo. So this species only occurs in this kind of habitat. Okay, they are monophagous, feeding on a single species of Aristolochia, but it's a, a common host plant. So we, we, we know that maybe the host plant is not the, the problem to explain this highly restricted uh, distribution for, of the species. Moreover, it's locally abundant. All known colonies of Paritza scania, it's composed of dozens or more individuals uh, all year round. So it's, it's multivoltine, common, feeds on a very common and abundant host plant. And the main threats are obviously the destruction of his habitats. In Rio de Janeiro, coastal Rio de Janeiro and Espírito Santo, all these Restinga, these sandy forests, have been more and more invaded by urban uh, areas and uh, high uh, profile uh, residential areas for rich people that would have to like to have a, a, a house near the beach. So uh, more and more since the last century, this species has been lost in habitats. And this is the main problem now for the future management of these species. But because it's so abundant, easy to rear in laboratory, in insectary, it's a good candidate for management and reintroduction, for example, in areas where it has been uh, extinct recently. Uh, some recent studies on these species, including a very nice study of um, microsatellites and uh, CO1 sequence, we, we, we got sequences from most of the Rio de Janeiro uh, populations, and we could get uh, information of how and when are these populations isolated. Uh, in fact, they are not as isolated as we thought initially. Uh, so we, we have still, um, these are good news for the future conservation of these species. And uh, I think if we put more efforts in conserving the Paris Ascanius, we would have success in maintaining this iconic, uh, this butterfly species available for the future generations of uh, researchers, kids, and people in general. And also, we produced some papers on uh, market capture. And so, as I told you, Paris Ascanius have lots of information available. Now, I was finishing this presentation, two subspecies of Mimoides lisitos that I just uh, selected to be in the end of the presentations. Mimoides lisitos is also a widespread species. All other subspecies are not endangered or not threatened, but two subspecies are in threat. Uh, Lisitos sebastianus is considered vulnerable and uh, inhabits the lowland forests and for the sand forests again in Costa Rio de Janeiro, Espírito Santo, and maybe in Bahia. There's an old record uh, of Bahia, Bahia, but we have no specific locality. And this subspecies is very scarce in the field and also in collections. And we have so little information about it. So we don't know very much about this subspecies. But a very uh, near subspecies is Lisitos harisianus. And Lisitos harisianus is also iconic for two reasons. First, because it's very, very restricted, much more restricted than uh, his model, that's Paris Ascanius. Mimores Lisitos Harisianus is supposedly a putative uh, Batesian mimic of uh, Paris Ascanius, especially the form Platidesma, that's this one with the large, broad white bands and a bit of red rose in some species. They are very similar to Paris Ascanius. And uh, all known populations occurs in a very narrow stripe of sandy forest in coastal region in Rio de Janeiro, inside the distribution of the Ascanus that's much broader. So Mimoides lisitos harisianus could be much more threatened than Ascanius. It's now considered as critically endangered. 
And more important than that, the, the mimetic form, this platydesma, it's in fact in danger. Uh, maybe the platydesma could beca become more and more rare if Paritzascans becomes less common. And what can we could uh, have in the future is that Sebastianus will just invade with genes the form platydesma and this very interesting convergence, mimetic convergence of amimoids with aparites could be lost forever. Uh, but at the end, I would like to talk about the part of the project of Augusto Rosa, my PhD student. Augusto, um, as part of his thesis, he proposed a big project on citizen science where Augusto prepared some uh, plates of each one of the endangered species in Brazil and published it regularly in Facebook and other social media. And Augusto did that for one year and very frequently again and again, publishing the pictures. And we got very much important information from amateur photographers, people that just post beautiful pictures of butterflies in the Facebook and Instagram. And with this citizen science project, we could add information for all butter endangered butterflies in Brazil, all threatened butterflies in Brazil, including Paris Ascanius and uh, uh, other uh, Papillonids. So I, I think that this is a very good way to, con to connect the social media and the amateur people with the science, because we, we could not be in every place every time, but we can have these people that are doing pictures and publishing them, this, this, these people could be important partners in, for conservation of these butterflies. And what the, are the perspectives? As we discussed in our action plan, we need to search for additional populations and localities. We need to get more data on behavior, host plants, mature stations, everything related to natural history of these butterflies. Populational studies are very much important. We have population data for only two of the endangered solotail. So both mark recapture and molecular based studies are needed more and more. Long term monitoring of the known populations need to go back to the places and see the species are still present and again and again. And with all this, combi this information combined, we can have one the adequate evaluation of the real conservation status of each one of this threatened taxa. Maybe some of these are not threatened at all, but some of these could be much more interesting than we think. Thank you very much to all people involved in this very nice event, the Solotail Burn Ring uh, event, to the photographers that uh, uh, give us the permission to use some of the last pictures you saw, Arnon Borges with Freddy Mario Andre, to Mark Collins and Martin Pratridge that make contact with us since the beginning. Thank you very much for the invitation. For the all Brazilian grant agencies that helped us and follow us in our social media. Thank you very much. And I hope that uh, this was interesting for you. And I'm open to answer questions, to answer emails, to send you material uh, if you have interest. Thank you very much. Okay, let's yes. stop this. Como é que eu faço agora, Luz? Já parou? Já. Você já, já fez o stop and record, né? Não. Aqui. Isso.